Okay, now we can see your presentation. Uh, uh, her presentation topic is uh, uh, future forecasting and analysis of Sri Lankan tea exports in terms of driving forces using data mining concepts. So can I start now? Yes, yes please. Okay, so good morning to the honorable panel, the lecturers and my dear colleagues. I'm Lavina Rajendran from Sapragam University of Sri Lanka. Today, I'm here to present about my research paper, which is entitled as Future Forecasting and Analysis of Sri Lankan Tea Export in Terms of Driving Forces Using Data Mining Concepts. So these are the uh, main con contents which will be discussed throughout this presentation today. Introduction, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, future work and references. So now let's move on to the introduction. As we all know, Sri Lankan tea export is playing a major role in Sri Lankan economy. So this is a picture from World News from 2015. Here you can see Kenya exports 25 percentage of tea to the world market, while Sri Lanka exports 17 percentage, which is least for our country when we consider about the historical records. And when we are talking about the factors that affect the tea export, there are a number of factors. So such factors can be classified as rainfall, temperature, and so on. So by analyzing the uh, last research works, it's found there are some research problems. So those problems were carried out and analyzed in this research study. So such problems are how all these independent variables affect the tea product, uh, production and the negative positive correlation along the time that is to be improved of the accuracy of the past researchers and also the examination of the priority in which the tea export will affect for a particular tea type and the prediction of tea export for a particular tea type for a given set of feature that is to be improved in order to improve the Sri Lankan tea export. And these are some of the research papers which were considered as the reference to carry out this research process from the beginning to end. For the first paper, Sri Lanka's tea economy issues and strategies. Uh, strategies. This conveys Sri Lankan tea industry has lost its competitive advantage. And this uh, paper gives a result as the reason for the low production is the lack of technology. And for the loss of tea plantation is due to low yield from age plants, degraded soils, and under implementation of good agricultural practices. The second paper, it discusses the economic issues and government policies for the Sri Lankan tea industry. And here, they have results uh, as the high cost of production have reduced the competitiveness in Sri Lankan global tea markets. And the third paper, which was written by M, uh, Ms. K. M. V. Sachitra and Dr. P. J. Kumara Singh, uh, investigates the determinants of export competitiveness of tea industry in Sri Lanka. Here they have used quantitative research approach and Porter's diamond model. And for the primary data collection, they have used email survey, and then they have used partial least square structural equation model. Then in the fourth paper, it analyzes the present trend of Sri Lankan tea industry and identify the problem in international marketing of tea. Here, as a result, they have found increase of bulk tea in export is blended locally in the local markets and increased cost production is due to high wage of labors, increased price of fuel and increased electricity charges and high price of fertilizers. So these are some of the areas which were covered by this research study. So the main uh, focus of this study is to analyze and analyze the influence factors for the Sri Lankan tea export by improving the past researchers. And also it predicts the tea export in Sri Lanka by analyzing the monthly export quantities of various tea types with the help of machine learning tools and techniques. And these are some of the evidences that there are some problems in the past researchers. So uh, there are no clear explanation is provided in how the author had used some of the methodologies and risk factors such as weather and reforms in the tea industry were not considered. And also for the data collection, they have used expert opinion survey, pre-tested questionnaire, rather than using uh, the machine learning technologies or any other tools. And also inaccurate data analysis performed. 
Now we'll move on to the methodology that is used in the research process. So as you all can see, this picture illustrates the overall methodology that is used from the uh, research process. So as for the first step, uh, the data collection was done for that recent past 10 year data set from 2011 to 2021 was considered. The official website of the uh, T-Board Statistical Department provided the basic information regarding the different tea types such as green tea, tea in bulk, tea in packets, tea in bags and instant tea. And the data of crude oil price was obtained from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis Economic Research Department. And the US dollar exchange rate was collected from Central Bank of Sri Lanka. From the all the data collection, it was found that the total number of 630 uh, features could be used for this research study. And then the data pre-processing was considered. Since the data were collected from manually, there were no null values and duplicates found. Therefore, the data cleaning and data reduction was not used here. And then the <clears throat> single data collected were integrated into a single database and then transport transformed in the way which uh, the research could be used to conduct this process further. And then by considering the past researchers and analyzing them, it was found that the independent variables such as the export earning, T types, US dollar exchange rate, credit price, month and year is not that much used or considered for the dependent variable T export in the past researchers. Therefore, these features were identified for this research process. And then the model was uh, built with the help of VACA software. <coughs> To, uh, to predict the tea export. Here, nine different classifiers were used. And then the mo model was, uh, sorry, and the model was evaluated by using the 20% of the, uh, the final data set and 80% of data was used to train the model that was built. And the effectiveness and efficiency of the model were evaluated by using the different criteria of the confusion matrix. Now we go on to the results that were found from the uh, methodology. So for the model building, as I mentioned earlier, 20 percentage, that is 126 instances were used to, uh, from the entire data set. And by analyzing the different criteria of the confusion matrix, accuracy, precision, recall, uh, the best accuracy model was selected to conduct the research study. So here you can see the, how the classification model was built with the help of VACA software. So this is a table that uh, gives the accuracy and error rate that was found from the nine different classifiers, which were built uh, with the help of VACA software. So as you all can see, the multi-layer perceptron and random forest gave the uh, same accuracy with 98.41 percentage. But when we are considering the mean absolute error, the multilayer perceptron gave the least error rate and the NAVE base gave the least accuracy. But overall, the all the per, uh, performance of the classifiers were more than 90 percentage. But by considering the error rate, it was uh, declared that multilayer perceptron is the best high accuracy model to use the uh, sorry, to predict the T export. And then the attribute ranking, again, the VACA software was used to uh, rank the attributes. From that, uh, year, month, T type, and export earning were uh, considered as the highly impactful variables, while the US dollar exchange rate and credit price were considered as the least impactful features. And then if we talk about the findings according to the T types, it's observed that tea in packets and uh, were exported in the larger quantity while instant tea was exported in the least quantity as per the month. Now we'll move on to the discussion. As per the main objective of this research is to improve the Sri Lankan tea export while examining the factors that affect the tea export. This study uh, discovered some of the major factors that influence the Sri Lankan tea export and how they influence them. Also, it identified some of the major types of variety, uh, types of tea that are exported from Sri Lanka to the global tea market. From it identified that tea in packets are highly exported, while instant tea is least at exported. Uh, 
And then to find the best performance model, nine different classifiers were used. From that, multi-layer perceptron was considered as the best accuracy model. And also it is determined that year, month, T type and export earnings play the important role for the T export prediction. So as for the conclusion, I would like to say that Sri Lankan Tea Board is the government national regulatory body. It has no system to predict the export forecast based on the tea types currently. So this paper investigate the feature that influences the tea export variation now for developing the prediction model, which is more suitable. To foresee the tea export, multi-layer perceptron is more appropriate uh, more than any other classification algorithm that were used in uh, that were built from the beginning. Uh, since this model gave only 1.5 percentage of error rate, this shows that the uh, predicted export, export volume is more accurate uh, with 98 percentage when compared to the original value. So these are some of the future work that can be done in order to enhance this research process. So this study can be further generated by a software application that could be built on the model pattern and uh, the results discovered from the research. This platform should include the features like uh, historical data entry, amount of forecasting actions, and beyond that investigation, the elevation, T, uh, sorry, the T elevation auction prices, those can be considered along with the export value. And these are some of the references which were considered from the beginning to the end uh, when conducting this research process successfully. And as for the acknowledgement, I would like to express my sincere gratitude towards all the academic and non-academic stars from the Department of Computing and Information Systems from Sabragama University of Sri Lanka, as well as the, uh, the General John uh, Kotlavala Defense University for giving me a, such an um, opportunity to share my knowledge with you all. And thanks for listening. Now the presentation open for the discussion. Okay, that was uh, uh, Ms. Lavina. That is on uh, future forecasting and analysis of Sri Lanka tea exports in terms of driving forces using data mining concepts. Right mm -hmm. now it's open to ask questions. So if you have any questions, please ask them. Any questions, please? So I have a question. So the first one, uh, so you said that uh, uh, feed forward neural networks uh, gave the best results. So how many layers have you used for this one? Uh, actually, it was used or uh, not, it was built manually with the help of VACA software only I have built it. So since those uh, algorithms are pre-built one, I didn't uh, build uh, manually. Okay, then so you don't have any idea about the number of layers. So Okay, no. so, so this is about forecasting. So why didn't you use a recurrent neural network instead of a feed forward neural network? Because uh, most of the time when you have a forecasting, so better you use a recurrent for neural network. For example, you can use an uh, LSTM. So, so why didn't you use uh, such a neural network? Actually, okay, then it's so a when you use the neural network, so because you don't, so we assume that the data are independent in the, the, the normal uh, multi-layer perceptrons. But uh, when you use the recurrent neural network, so we assume that uh, the current data is depend on the previous one. So because that is more appropriate for forecasting. So for the next stage, I'm suggesting you to use a recurrent neural network, especially and LSTM, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, in addition uh, to that, I want to mention that, uh, uh, so me, nowadays uh, an, an, another uh, important area of machine learning is uh, explainable AI. So because uh, most of these uh, algorithms based on black box models. So once you get the result, so we can't explain it. So then nowadays we have the 
explainable AI, then we can explain. For example, in this uh, research, so you can explain. So if you have used an explainable AI method, you can explain which factors directly impact on the the the, the T forecasting. Right. So then, uh, in the next stage, you you have you have to consider about that one also. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, any other questions, please? Uh, yeah, my, I have. Hey. A, uh, so, uh, I'm going to ask about the data. So, when you select the data set, uh, how you select the features or the variables uh, from the data that you had? Actually, I was considering uh, mainly I was analyzing the past research studies, and I have found that uh, most of the variables were the type of the soil, sunlight, temperature, those things. But uh, so if we consider the types of the tea, there were uh, that much, there were no that much of considerations given to that, those variables. So that I have um, searched them manually from the Sri Lankan tea board and also from the central bank. Uh, so I have just collected manually and uh, used as the data set. How many features were there? Totally, there were, uh, sorry, in five. Okay. Uh, one question from my side also. Uh, now, how far away you can uh, forecast uh, through this algorithm? Uh, by using the uh, previous data set. That means uh, I have just used 80% of data for Good morning, all of you. Good morning, all of you, and welcome to my presentation, Fuzzy Logic Based Learning Style Selection Integrated Smart Learning Management System. Author SPM Arachi, co authors DU Vidanagama and WMSK Ilmini. Introduction. Learning materials that contain the entities of each learning style can increase the understanding level of each individual subject. Each learning style of Felder Silverman model can be categorized as visual basic learners, which consider about the images, graphs, audios, videos, and many other attractive objects, as well the reading-based learners who are based on uh, text reading. Methodologies that are used, used for the uh, learning style detection contain advanced pattern recognition techniques, which are based on huge amount of data sets. Fuzzy logic can reduce this complexity. Problem identification. So the problem that I've identified was that the instructors in a specific university cannot identify the number of learners which were going under a specific learning style. So if there is a such mechanism to identify the number of students in a particular learning style, that uh, instructor will get a big advantage to create their learning materials for the better understanding. Objective. Objectives of this learning management system to enable a learning style selection feature using fuzzy logic that enables instructors to prepare their learning materials based on each individual's learning preference. And it also helps to increase the level of obs observations. So it will reduce the complexity of learning style selection. So rather than using 
complex algorithms to detect learning styles. It works similarly to human reasoning. So here are some research papers which I've considered. So the first research paper uh, contained some features like information gathered to implement supervised training model. So mutual uh, similarity pattern recognition used to identify the learning style of each user. Drawbacks of this system which I've identified were need a large memory to collect data, need complex algorithms to detect learning styles. The next research, uh, it contains the features like content-based filtering, collaborative filtering, hybrid filtering we, uh, were considered as recommendation techniques. So these are some kind of primitive methods. In the next research paper, it has the features like uh, it proposed a recommend system, which is based on e-learning material, uh, uh, which is based on ontology. Uh, once we go into the ontology, it creates a uh, lack of uh, versatility and difficulty to modify. And particularly, those are dealing with a lot of information as well. In the next research paper, uh, it contains the features like uh, it uh, to extract learning style, it access uh, web blogs of each learner, pre-process web blog files, create learning style model, and build tree using decision tree classifier, predict learning style model were taken as major steps. So as the drawbacks, Decision tree learners can create over complex trees that do not generalize the data well. Decision trees can be unstable because small variations in the data might result in completely different tree being generated. So the methodology. This research paper expressed the learning style prediction based on two examination results. Each examination is a quiz which include five multiple choice objective response questions. The freshers who are going to access the learning management system for their first time can get the chance to attempt to the two quizzes the first quiz contained the, the theorem and it will elaborate it using the graphical content. So after the elaboration, learners should participate on a quiz to obtain marks. Second quiz contained a theorem that elaborate using textual content. And after the elaboration, learners should participate on a quiz to obtain marks. So those marks will of the two quizzes will be evaluated and then the and then it will pro predict the uh, predict the probability of being a visual learner. So these are the fussy inputs which I've considered. Each student contains two quiz results. Those quiz results are the fuzzy inputs of this fuzzy logic system. And each result set has five triangle membership functions. They are very low, low, average, high, and very high. Fuzzy outputs. Uh, so the fuzzy output is the uh, being uh, the prop, the being a visual learner. So there are five membership function in, functions in the fuzzy output. So they are not a visual learner, unsuccessful visual learner, average visual learner, successful visual learner, and top visual learner. 
here are the fussy rules which are considered in the uh, fussy uh, inference engine. So for the fussy inference engine, going to uh, take into uh, consider each rules in the uh, fussy rule base. So to generate the fussy output, this research paper considered uh, results of two quizzes. So they were named as quiz one and quiz two. Here is the membership function of the uh, fussy input. And then this is the membership function of being a visual learner. So uh, I've used MATLAB uh, to generate this uh, MATLAB script. And here are some uh, random uh, inputs which I've uh, considered and I got the uh, performance value of each. As in the dis discussion, the end product of this research is to boost up the learning style selection by allowing students to participate in two separate quizzes the first time that student logs into the system. A group of students who knows their learning style via a psychological session will be selected out of a university and each student will be evaluated by a test regarding their learning style as similar to the LMS. So this will, uh, this will generate the result that uh, the truth of the uh, truth of being a visual learner. So for the conclusion, uh, rather than using complex algorithms to detect learning styles, it works similarly to human reasoning when we are using fuzzy logic, as well as any user can uh, easily understand the structure of fuzzy logic. It does not need a large memory. Algorithms can be easily described with fewer data and easily provides effective solutions to the problems that have high complexity and uncertainty while be easily modify the rules in fuzzy logic system. Here are some references which I've considered as and for the acknowledgement, this research was supported by Mrs. D. U. Vidanagama and Ms. W. M. S. K. Ilmini, Department of Information Technology, General Sir John Kathalawal Defense University. Further, the appreciation goes to all senior and junior lecturers for their valuable comments and continuous support. Finally, also, we would like to appreciate our colleagues for the support they offered us in the completion of this research. Thank you. Okay, now uh, the floor is open for questions. A uh, few uh, quick comments. Thank you very much for the presentation. Now, uh, when you talk about this, uh, teaching, learning, assessment are three pillars, okay? Uh, then you have done the study in uh, assessment. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. Learning styles comes on to the learning part. The learning component, there are, now, what are the learning styles? There's a method called WAC, visual, auditory, then uh, nice kinetic, then uh, what auditory. auditory, right? The, these four has to come. Now you have checked only the visual part. In as well as reading. The reading. Right? Yeah. Yeah, those two. You have not considered the two, right? Yeah. That is one point. The other point is now when you are looking at this one, you have to look at this Honey and Mumford. There's a method they have described. If you have to identify the visual, what are the factors? So you have not considered that one, right? So what I feel is, you know, like you have to look at all factors, right? All factors. And then only you'll be able to check uh, in that model, whether is it fit to that learning styles. 
Okay. So did you do that one? Did you refer the Hani and Mumford method, the criteria? No, sir. Please refer, right? Okay. Okay. And what is your sample size? Uh, actually, I do not need uh, any... No, no. In, in your model, like you did a study, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I still didn't uh, did that study. Uh, I will continue it as the further work. As up to now, which I've done is I created the fuzzy logic system only, sir. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, please? I have one question. Uh, so if you take this, uh, I mean, when you are considering the uh, methods of identification of the methods you have taken, uh, as I said, the uh, visual learning, and you have given a question here. Uh, yeah. So have you, I mean, and uh, what I understood is that you do a uh, pre-psychological session for them to understand what is their uh, level of uh, the method of learning as well. Yeah. So in that, they, uh, in that means they are having a prior knowledge about what is their learning style is. Yeah. Yes, so after that, you evaluate it through a questionnaire. Yeah. Uh, so have you considered any Actually, madam, uh, I've considered that the psychological, psychological test for the students will be evaluated the truth of this system. So therefore, I have considered the psychological test. So uh, the, the results of that psychological test will not be uh, uh, shown to the students. So therefore, uh, I think... Okay, any other questions? Uh, so you have done a, a, a good research on your undergraduate project. No, so this is the undergraduate project, yeah, no? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then uh, if you have, if you don't have any other questions, so we can go to the next part. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Senuri. Okay, then uh, the next one will be on uh, facial recognition based on uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, the next one is uh, on uh, computerization of flashcards for early childhood education by uh, AVN Sandamini, MKP Madhusanka, and Chel Premaratna. And the presenter will be uh, Miss A. V. N. Sandamani, and her biography is uh, she's a software engineering undergraduate from the Kotalavalavalu Defense University, who is currently completing the intern internship period relevant to the final year. This paper demonstrates the research conducted regard to the final year project. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. So today I'll be presenting you all my research uh, done on computerization of flashcards for early childhood education. Um, so first,
でしょうん。OK、uh,。So first let me introduce what is this topic on。So this is going to be a portable and easy to use digitalized learning platform for children under the age of eight, whom we are calling children in the early childhood,、uh, according, which is、uh, built according to the Sri Lankan education context along with the NI syllabus. So NIE was cooperating with me on、uh, selecting the syllabus and the categories. And、uh, the guidance and teaching methodologies build on focusing the learning and teaching process based on flashcards, which is、uh, commonly used in、uh, learning and teaching process of the children. So, this is going to be simply a computerized flashcard system specialized for children、uh, in Sri Lanka under the age of eight. So, what this concept is for. So, basically, as you all can see in the image, with all these.、Uh, All these、uh, pandemic situations and all the economic crises, crises happened in Sri Lanka.、Uh, most of the time, we saw that for school education, there are online platforms. For university education, there are online platforms. But there was a gap for early childhood education. So that is why、uh, such an application is needed in Sri Lanka for early childhood education. So, simply, if I put it into points, the problem that I see、uh, is the lack of a learning platform for early childhood. Child, childhood education in Sri Lanka, enhancing primary education among the children in more innovative manner using technology, making use of technology to educate children in their early childhood, and、uh, and teaching the children the native languages used inside the country. So the native languages part、uh, it was it is implemented inside the application. So it will be going on. So in the next slide, y'all can see it. So. What is the solution I came up with? So basically, I'm going to introduce the first object detection application introduced to read and display the name of the detected object in all three native languages used inside inside Sri Lanka, which are English, Sinhala, and Tamil.、Uh, which are, which is、uh, which the application is going to be like、uh, specialized for children in their early childhood. And what is the aim? So the main aim of this proposed system is to develop an application which will help to fulfill the fundamental foundation of education of Sri Lankan children under the age of eight with all three native languages, Sinhala, Tamil, and English. So the language will be given as、uh, textual as well as、uh, voice outputs. And、uh, what are the objectives?、Uh, so. To introduce an online platform for learning process of early childhood, which is lacking in the current Sri Lankan education system, teaching young children all three native languages used in means of communication inside the country, to prioritize early childhood education in online learning methodologies, and to develop a simple application which is easy to be used by children and assisted by preschool teachers or even the parents. So simply, this is、uh, the proposed methodology to be used. So this is this is a mobile application. The user can click an image, and also they will be given the opportunity to select the category, and the image click will be recognized using the model developed, and the user will be get getting、uh, the detected image、uh, with the detected name,、uh, the object name. In all three languages, Sinhala, English, and Tamil, as well as the voice output in all three languages. So this is the whole development methodology. So data is collected, they are processed, and、uh, they are trained, validated, and tested in the、uh, range of 60 to 2020. And then the trained model model is developed and evaluated, and they are、uh, they are tested、uh, for get, to get more accuracy and efficiency. And in the meantime,、uh, in the user side,、uh, I, I I have used、uh, PyCharm as an ID to develop it in Python, and TensorFlow, Keras, Open OpenCV, Google Trans, and GTS GTTS are used in the development to all these translators as well as for the voice outputs. And Kiwi is used as my development language for the UIs, and、uh, so. You all can see the image is captured and it is going to the pre-processing process, and then it is predicted by the model and it is mapped with the word using translators. And after the translators are translated,、uh, so it will be given 
as our voice output using uh, Google translators, as well as using GTTS. So that is the whole development process, which is inside this application that I'm going to introduce. So this is a mind map of the application. So basically, uh, the user is given a chance to select a category. So going on with the NIE syllabus, I've selected some categories. So I'm still in the development stage. So when I'm, when I'm implementing and going on, I thought of putting more categories on. And uh, as you all can see in the, see in the th third um, in interface, uh, you all can click image. And on the third, fourth interface, you all can see the image is detected with the name. And it is given in singular English and Tamil with the voice outputs related to the language we are going on with. So basically, for the user interfaces as well, uh, I did the research part where you, uh, where you have to, you have to uh, you have to use specific colors and uh, for because this application is going to be for children so you have to use specific colors and all so i've considered all in the development process as well so this is a data set training part uh, currently in the development stage i, I have selected uh, four categories sorry uh, yeah four categories animals plants animals uh, fruits vegetables numbers and letters so this is a data set uh, accuracy and uh, yeah, accuracy rates I've used. So I've I've, I've trained uh, around twenty two thousand uh, two to uh, two hundred twenty five thousand sixty six images with eighty classes for this data set. Going along with uh, for data sets for fruits around sixty seven thousand six hundred ninety two, and for vegetables training about uh, one hundred fifty thousand images. Uh, so these are the categories I've trained for now. These will be increased uh, with the development of the application. So they were given, they were giving uh, good accuracies as well. Uh, so this is the this is the current interfaces I've developed uh, for the application. As you all said, I've been considering the colors and as well as the uh, the the colors that should be implemented in the applications which are used for children. So basically, uh, you all should be always focusing only on the things that should be uh, focused other than adding all the features and all. So that's why the uh, interfaces are very simply made. So as you all can see, the, the welcome page, also you all get a voice output for your name. When you said click on the greet, you'll get the greet saying your name and you, the user is given the selection opportunity then the click of the image and then the uh, detection part in all three languages going with the voice outputs so uh, as for a conclusion uh, this is a simple and easy to use application which will help to enhance the knowledge level of children under the age of eight as i said the early the children in their early childhood uh, this will also help to improve the Sri Lankan primary education system as a new platform for early childhood education as for the process of online education in all three languages, singular, Tamil, and English in use, because as I described, there is no application for the children under the age of eight in Sri Lanka currently. So the, if, if we can implement something like this, that will be a great opportunity for the children under the age of eight to enhance their education through technology. So this will be fulfilling the gap of online uh, learning and teaching methodology of primary education uh, of Sri Lanka. And also the special uh, scenario is, so this is fully built upon uh, upon the syllabus and the help of the uh, specified methodologies used in NIE. So if we can implement it, uh, it will fill in the gap, uh, which is for childhood education in, in the country now. Uh, so these are the references I went through in doing my research and developing my application. Uh, so I take this opportunity to thank uh, the supervisors, the coordinators for their massive support and guidance given throughout this process and a special gratitude for the help given for the research by the NIE, uh, NIE of Sri Lanka. And uh, finally, the, uh, I would like to thank all the staff who taught me and supported me on achieving the objective. So hopefully I'm uh, hoping to finalize this and give this product out. That's all, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Sandamini. So that is a computerization of flashcards for early childhood question, education, childhood education. 
Any questions, please? Can you switch on? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a little bit confused uh, why you are using a training model for that because I, are you going to capture something and ask for the uh, uh, baby? Yeah, uh, so so as I shown here, so basically the user is going to capture an image. So after that, they can select a category they want. So it can be, so this is going to be assisted by a preschool teacher, parents or someone elderly. So after capturing, uh, you can select, is it a fruit, a vegetable and numbers or letters. So after that, the captured image, according to the category they have selected, only they go through the model and select what is the capture? That's why you're trying to, yeah, I, that's I, right. I, I didn't get that capture. Yeah, that's okay. That's right. okay. That's right. So then how do you, uh, so for example, then you can capture the image. Yeah. So then, uh, so there may be several objects in the image. Isn't yeah. it? So then how do you uh, identify those uh, objects? So uh, basically they're going to capture the image and after that they're going to select the category. What is the image they're going to capture as as so it is, is it, uh, cap, uh, those things identify automatically or so you have to so i'm training a model for the the, the categories as to the vegetables fruits and numbers mm -hmm. so when the image is captured and this category is selected as this is assisted by a preschool teacher or a parent uh, so using the model trained the object will be detected with the category they have uh, selected so then only one object uh, will be kept captured yes, at yes, once yes okay Since, since we are dealing with the... Uh, I have one question. Uh, so when you are training the model, so the data sets that you have already taken, uh, which is uh, the, when you take the fruits and all, the whatever the data you have taken, not maybe particularly for the Sri Lankan context, like many yeah. fruits, right? Yeah. So have you uh, tested with uh, Sri Lankan, whatever the uh, specific foods like Veralu or something like that, and whether you train those type of because now modern the uh, tools and techniques for children, so better to have sort of a um, very unique thing specifically for Sri Lankan context. It will be the uh, because it's like you select the group of people like a, a age of eight. Yeah, under the age of eight. Yes. So uh, when you are, did you uh, test this system with the uh, students, the children? Uh, not yet. It's in the development stage. And as you said, the like, as there are so many categories going on and uh, yeah, I didn't specialize it for Sri Lankan fruits. Yes. Are like, yeah. It should be like that. Yeah, like okay. we have some special uh, specific things which is related to the Sri Lanka. It would be very, uh, very good and ideal to select and capture the data and train the model when you are collecting the data for training the model. Yeah, sure, I'll let it as a Can I ask a question uh, from Zoom? Yes. Yep. Yes. Now, since uh, we are dealing with children, now when you, after capturing this accuracy of the Output should be hundred percent because uh, uh, it can't be wrong. How can you achieve this goal? Um, so this is still in the development stage, and I'm hoping to test it with uh, like children in different age groups. I'm going to select some children and uh, with like I'm going to do a parallel test where one children is given the flashcards and the other children using this mobile application and to see what is the improvement they're going to get. So that is the testing strategy I'm hoping to use, but currently this is still on the uh, development stage. So yeah, so to get that accuracy, I'm hoping to do a testing strategy, strategy as I said before. So yeah. at the moment, do you use? Um, so for different categories, Yes. Uh, there, there are around uh, so 
So around for animals, actually, I tested around twenty two thousand five hundred and sixty six images with eighty classes, mm -hmm. and for the others, sixty seven thousand six hundred ninety two images with one hundred and thirty one classes, and fifteen thousand images with fifteen classes for vegetable data sets. So that means, uh, so per per class, uh, you have only very less amount of yeah, number of because, images, yeah. no. So you are going to use uh, deep learning methods, or, or so have you used deep learning methods? Yeah, for training. And also. So one uh, quick uh, question: uh, Do this NIE is having the preschool curriculum? Uh, they don't have a specific yeah, NI yeah. curriculum, but yeah. as I discussed, they gave me the curriculum for the children, uh, the, which is used in gra for grade one and yeah, two. Yeah. So I go through it and with the discussions only, I came up with uh, the categories. So this is and, so not for the preschool grade one, am I right? Uh, yeah. uh, I wanted the development for the, for the people who are under the age of eight, as they don't have, they were okay going with the syllabus for grade one and two, because that is the syllabus they use, uh, yeah, for the children under the age of eight. Yes. Uh, can I ask again another question? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, now, do you think that uh, machine learning is necessary for this application? Without machine learning, can we develop this uh, app? I believe so. That's right. Um, Cognition based temporary employee management system by KAJV Aruna Ratna, JJRS Fernando and DMR Kulasekar. The presenter will be Mr. Aruna Ratna. Uh, so his biography is uh, Mr. Aruna Ratna is an officer cadet from Intech 35 who is following a BSc on a software engineering degree program at the Department of Computer Science of General Kotalawal Bula Defense University. He has successfully completed his internship at the IT department of the BAM Knitting Private Limited. He is interested in research areas such as image processing, cybersecurity, and digital forensics. Okay, Mr. Arun Ratna, you, know, you can continue. Good morning, all of you. Uh, I'm going to present uh, research on base recognition based temporary employee management system. Firstly, I move to the introduction. Why temporary employees are need? There are two employees in the companies. They are permanent employees and temporary employees. And also the companies have two specific tasks. They are permanent tasks and extra tasks. Extra tasks means, means unnecessary changes occurs in the company. Uh, it is extra task. In permanent employees cannot involve these extra tasks because they have relevant assigned specific tasks. According to that, the companies hire temporary employees. It is very advantageful because they need to give day-to-day -day salary only. And also companies need to hire the permanent employees. They can hire the permanent employees through the temporary employees. And next, move to the aims of research. Analyze and introduce a software application in employment sector developed for the benefits of temporary employees and other related stakeholders in worldwide. And analyze the solution of face recognition based temporary employee management system. The screen shows the sequence of my research presentation. Background. In Sri Lanka, 90% of temporary workers are working in the private sector, and overall, around 60% of employees work as temporary workers out of 2.8 million private sector employees in Sri Lanka. An increase of temporary employees in private se sectors and 
the uh, permanent employees into one into tw nearly one into twenty two ratio. And the figure shows the temporary workers as percentage wage of wage employees in selected Asian countries, as well as in Sri Lanka. The main part of research presentation is the research problem. It is mainly one between the companies and the temporary workers. The main, uh, first uh, research problem is that they no, do not have a valid ID for the temporary employees, like permanent employees. According to that problem, they have wait until the outside in the company in the their identity is confirmed. It is very disadvantageous to the companies because they are effective is reduced and the time we we wastage. And second part is the payment are payments are you made using the written notes. And many of the these uh, written notes are misplacement uh, and the companies can't give their correct fully payment for the temporary employees and temporary employees can't get their fully payments. And the other problem is the brokers. Brokers get their uh, brokers, uh, companies hire the temporary employees through the brokers and brokers, uh, companies give their salaries to the brokers and brokers keep some money of temporary employee salary and other salaries are distributed. And other thing is difficulties of dividing tasks for employees. And the companies don't know their temporary employees' capabilities, who are capable of uh, the task. And the, the temporary employees can't give their maximum support to the companies because they can't achieve their task in successfully in within time. And other thing is waste of working time due to the lack of proper, proper schedule for temporary employees. These are the functional requirements registered as temporary employees, giving review for employees and giving the task to the best temporary employees. The system recognizes the temporary employees and the assigned tasks according to the reviews. The arrival time and date will be recorded. This system will ensure salaries are adjusted, corrected in the payroll management system and all data is recorded in the database. This is the research gap between the current system and the proposed system. In current system, they are mainly in uh, stakeholders are company, temporary workers and brokers and platforms are manually and uh, registered and identify temporary employees in manually and pay payroll management system in manually can't select people for suitable works, no security and less reliable accuracy efficiency and mostly uh, salary distribution done by brokers and proposed system. They have uh, two stakeholders company and temporary workers and platform is desktop based with a uh, web based system and the register and identify temporary employees in automated and payroll management system also automated and can select in purpose for suitable works by using the, their rating level and high accuracy and high reliable and accuracy and efficiency and salary distribution only the company. This is the methodology. They have two main uh, application, standalone desktop application and temporary employee management, payroll web application and standalone desktop application mainly focus on two section, sectional head section and admin section. Admin section done all the admin parts and sectional head uh, manage the temporary employees by give, giving rating, assigning tasks, likewise. The, this demonstration shows the uh, easy to understand the, the system There are mainly three sections, admin section, sectional heads, and temporary employees. Admin section done uh, the registration of the temporary employees and they are edit their registration some uh, details. And mainly the newly registered employees come to the company and giving their details and uh, fill their uh, tasks and uh, other things in their preference and giving uh, get their images. In I use LBPH algorithm the, that use 200 images for best accuracy and use gray color images. And after the training, this uh, after the training these uh, images, and it is use uh, LBPH and cascade algorithm for uh, detecting features of the face. And the thing the next day the washing section wants to uh, get uh, additional work in their section. The section head. Uh, assigned us for best rating, uh, highest rating uh, 
person and gene task for them in this newly registered person give task and after the giving the uh, their task to the this section any other section can't give uh, get this employee because it is only the washing section for next 24 hours and next next uh, they come to the, their companies and uh, the in front of the camera he he face detection and after the face detection uh, the their uh, task their section and their id numbers are detected and after the the uh, their attendance will be automated and according to the attendance payroll management system also automated and next task is the sectional head this is the uh, company should get their workers in best best temporary employees according to that the rating level uh, the rating level give standard methods and uh, and uh, after the calculation uh, give new rating level for these employees according to their performance and uh, finally uh, this uh, desktop application with web based system the web based system uh, web based system mainly focus on temporary employee management system it is main it is temporary employees can can register using this web based system for the company and also they can uh, see their payroll system and uh, other the tasks and the section and the main thing is the uh, they can get their salaries in day uh, day by day the permanent employees can only get their salaries on the per month in this uh, especially for the uh, temporary employees can their salaries in day by day the solutions the research problems the first one is do not have a valid id so they have to wait until their identity is confirmed in according to the demonstration the identity is confirmed by using the face recognition payment are made using the these written notes it's no any written notes in the current system the payments are given by payroll management system and problems have been due to the presence worker and between the company and the temporary employees there are no any brokers between the company and temporary employees difficulties of dividing tasks for the temporary employee the now the problem the uh, purpose system the companies know their capabilities for they are giving tasks and the sectional head give rating for temporary employees and according to their work and waste of working time due to the lack of proper schedule for temporary employees and display tasks and section using face recognition and last one is can't identify the good temporary employees assigning tasks for best temporary employees according to their rating level and giving grading for overall performance and they use lbpa cal calculation and use uh, gray color images and calculate their identification and the rating calculation there are three grading levels poor good and very good and i use stand uh, standard method for uh, calculate this rating level and these are the testing and result. They validate the face identification of various facial appearance. I use face recognition with that and without that and with mask. And next one is validate the face identification of various light condition in daytime and nighttime. And next one is validate the face identification of different people. I think the two person come to the companies in and one time the uh, system can identification correctly the two persons in one time this is the validate the face record identification of digital images the digital images uh, I, this system uh, identify digital images images the uh, temporary employees can see it easily in this case the digital images not identification another one is uh, validate the face identification of various face angles in uh, and next one is testing statistic of face module in uh, the skin source the uh, they are calculations the limitation this system can't use for permanent employees because they're only the temporary employees and review is done by manually it is can't be done in automatically and in face identification not working in different cases uh, the example faces of employees cannot be recognized the 
came covering the base. These are the references I went to. And acknowledgement, I would like to uh, thank for the, my supervisors, Ms. JJR Svenandu and MR, BMR Kulasekara. And I especially thanks for uh, Ms. Ilmini, Madam, and Upesa Miss, and uh, Captain uh, Imran sir to giving support to the participate this event. Uh, and thanks for. That is a facial recognition based temporary employee management system by Mr. Arunaratna. So now it's open for questions. I uh, I have a I have a one question. So why you have, why you have uh, selected only for temporary employees? What is the barriers to having it for uh, permanent employees? Because uh, in uh, my personal experience, uh, the uh, I. Uh, in work in the temporary university one and a half years uh, and the permanent employees have many systems for their companies but temporary employees in don't have any system for their uh, companies to their uh, help according to that uh, i face these problems in the uh, in my lifetime according to that i you uh, create this system right? yeah that, that's good you are selecting the temporary employees but uh, if you implement these type of th uh, things it's better that if you can uh, integrate that permanent employees yes, uh, that, it can be a... one system can be good yes. for a whole permanent employees and the temporary employees as well and also i have a small question like uh, so when you are uh, recognize the face if somebody is getting uh, accident or damage or having some sort of a problem in some area in the face how, how could uh, the system could uh, I, recognize uh, in the limitation i right. yeah i this the covering face uh, ah, okay and also when you're collecting the data it says uh, different sites you are yeah. collecting the data it, it's when you are collecting the data for the data set you are a uh, different angle yeah. you are collecting the data right okay so why did you use uh, face instead of face? So why can't we use the uh, fingerprints to uh, detect the, work, the temporary workers? Because uh, temporary employees are uh, having less knowledge. They are, they, it is uh, easiness of the temporary employees are use face recognition because they want to uh, stand in the camera. They, I, oh, the, so how about the, the permanent workers? Uh, so how they get the, 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 the percent or the absence in the, 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 for the permanent workers in the company? So, so you implemented this one in a company, no? Yeah. So how about they can get the, the, the absence of the persons in the, for, the, for the, the permanent workers? Permanent? Yeah. The not relevant to permanent uh, only the temporary temporary okay so i i mean the, the current system for the permanent workers and system only the temporary no 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 i mean the for the current system so they have a system to manage the the permanent workers uh, yeah. so uh, mainly using the fingerprint method fingerprint. in the uh -huh. uh, companies okay any other questions please So any questions from students? So I can see some students in the audience. So you can ask the questions also. I mention I uh, Uh, testing statistic of face module i use lbph algorithm it is the in the formula the confidence level are uh, in uh, source in the screen madam uh, the first i know various spaces more than 80 percent of the formula uh, confidence level and face identification of various light condition more than 80 percent face identification of various space angle more than 75 percent uh, in uh, face identification of different people uh, more than 80 percent the best invention of digital images more than 85 percent according to the formula of lb uh, linear binary pattern histogram uh, algorithm yes. uh, 
कि स्मॉल टाइम दे सिस्टम कैन आइडेंटिफाई इज द डिमोस्ट्रेशन लाइक डिमोस्ट्रेशन so how about the so if a colleague uh, just present an image of his uh, friend so so how does the the system detect that part i mean the uh, in case uh, so for example uh, uh, a worker's image is present to the the system not identification uh, the digital images taken from camera there is not identification in the field Uh, in mm -hmm. the display zone software, not on uh, the display unknown. Yeah. yeah, one more question. So, if twin people, twins are working in the same company, will it be able to identify those people? Uh, it is a problem. Uh, use a uh, car scan algorithm for uh, features for uh, identification of edge features like uh, any other questions please okay then uh, shall we wind up the session so this is the last presentation so i would like to thank all of these uh, people who presented the, the research papers i would like to congratulate them to them for their research work and i hope that they will continue the research and be productive and do a better job for the country okay thank you very much thank you sir Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of the computing technical session two. I would like to invite the chair of the session, Professor T. G. I. Fernando, to present the certificates to the presenters. You may come forward as I read out the names. S P M R A C H I. A V N Sandamini. K A J V Aruna Ratna In short notice I would also like to thank R Lavina for her presentation even though she is unable to receive her certificate physically today So please remain on stage Now I would like to invite Dean Faculty of Computing Dr A D A I Gunasekara to present the token of appreciation to the chairperson Thank you sir we have now reached the end of this session on behalf of the organization